each and every individual has the opportunity to develop oral communication skills and leadership skills. Yeah. Yes! Yes! Oh. And the best part is, the takeaway is, self-confidence! Yes! Oh. And personal improvement. Yes. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. I'd like to turn the meeting over to our Toastmaster. Please help me warmly welcome Art Atkinson. Yeah. Thank you, Rhonda. Good evening, Toastmasters, guests, and viewers at home. My name is Art Atkinson. My role as Toastmaster is to keep our evening's meeting moving along on schedule. I'm also charted with introducing the role players, of which there are a number. We have this evening a timer, and Rhea Saint has taken on that role for us this evening. Rhea, would you tell us what you will do as the timer? As timer, I will be keeping track of um, the exact time of each speech. The table topics are one to two minute speeches. The green light is turned on at one minute. The yellow light is turned on at one minute and 30 seconds. And the red light is turned on at two minutes and remains on until the end of the speech. The prepared speeches are usually five to seven minutes. The green light is turned on at five minutes. The yellow light is turned on at six minutes. And the red light is turned on at seven minutes and remains on until the end of the speech. And the evaluations are three minutes. The green light's turned on at two, yellow at two and a half, and the red light on at three minutes. And I'll give a report at the end of the meeting. I'm sure they will. Thank you for standing in, Mr. Cameron. We do have some speeches tonight at different times. We have Scott speaking for five to seven. We have Satish speaking 8 to 10 minutes. We have Jean speaking 7 to 9 minutes. So the timings of your lights, Rhea, will be slightly different from what you just said. And your agenda shows when they will go on. Do you see that? Five to Good. seven, eight to ten, and seven to nine. Thank you very much for standing Yay! Yay! We have an off-counter, 
Mr. Ryan Olson. Ryan, would you please tell us what you'll be doing as the author? I would love to. <laughs> Today I will be counting the ums and ahs in people's speech patterns. For example, false starts, pauses, tongue clicks, ands, buts, so's, you knows, like um, ah, uh, ha, and ah. Uh. Thank you. Thank you. We'll hear the report from you at the end of the meeting. We have a grammarian tonight, Rhonda Whitaker. Rhonda, would you tell us your role as grammarian? Yes, I would love to. The word tonight, a new word for your personal social vocabulary, <laughs> is heli heliotry. Ah! Oh, it's a tongue twister anyways. It's sun worship. Like Tom and Cindy were on a boat participating in heliotropy. Helio. Oh, help me. Helio. Helio. There's two L's Helio. in here. Heliotropy. Helio. 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 Okay, heliotropy. Helio. Everybody say that. Heliotropy. Helio. 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 Very good. Excellent. So tonight I will be keeping track of language used by the members that's exceptionally good or exceptionally bad. We'll have a brief report at the end of the meeting, and if you use bad language, I will make a suggestion of something that you could have used instead. That's about it. There's no hang hanging here today. Uh, I also listen for the word of the day. Whoever uses this word, heliolatry, gets the prize. I'll give my report at the end of the meeting. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Think of the Old Testament. Idolatry was forbidden. And if you were a sun worshiper, you did heliolatry. Idolatry, heliolatry, they're related. We have tonight a general evaluator, whom we'll hear later, and that'll be Bert Chinowski. Your hand, Bert. That's Bert. Bert! Thank you. All right, Bert. Thank you. Thank you, Bert. Our greeter tonight is just leaving the room. Lynette Vivacqua will also be the joke master. Yes, I have some one liners. I hope you laugh. Yeah. <laughs> and tonight, further elucidating what a ballot counter leader counter does will be Dan Craig. Yo! The role of the leader counter is to encourage all the members who have a role to be evaluated and get credit in their leadership manual. So my question is, those who have roles tonight, do you have your manual with you? Part two, do you have someone to evaluate you for the role? Would you raise your hand if you need someone to evaluate you in your manual? Can somebody evaluate Rhea? I'll do it. Okay. And Bert, I can evaluate you. And Ryan needs an evaluator. I can do yours too. <laughs> okay. The last part is bring your leadership manual every time, please. You never know when you're going to, even if you don't have a role assigned, you may pick one up. Moving <laughs> <laughs> right along, I'd like to bring up our Table Topics Master Risk Star for the hors d'oeuvre section of our meeting. Yo! Mr. Toastmaster, Toastmasters viewers at home, honored guests. Table Topics is an opportunity for Toastmasters and guests to give extemporaneous speeches, to speak spontaneously, not a prepared speech. Summertime, as we all know, is the time for two things. One is heliolatry, <laughs> and the other is blockbuster movies. So tonight's topic, tonight's Table Topics, is movies. Everyone likes movies. Everyone has their favorite movies. So if you're a fan of movies and you want to talk about your favorite movie, come on up. So who wants to do the first table talk? Yo! Yeah. Pick a number from one to five. Five. Seth, pick one of your favorite movies. If you could change anything about that movie, 
what would you change? Thank you, Rick. Hello Toastmasters, guests and viewers at home. If I were to take my favorite movie and I had free reign to change an aspect of that movie, what would I do? There's three parts to this. I have to choose a movie, pick something to change, and then describe why that's endearing to the audience as why you might be interested. I'm going to pick The Princess Bride. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> Princess Bride, how many of you are familiar with this movie, The Princess Bride? <laughs> the Princess Bride was a basically kind of a B-movie comedy about uh, a character who falls in love and there's a, there's, a, there's a break and there's drama and he goes through a, a series of trials and becomes a, a very intelligent and powerful kind of warrior figure. Then he has to rescue his true love, and Andre the Giant is in the movie. If I could do anything to make this movie better, it would be longer. <laughs> That's all. Just make the movie longer. There's so many great moments of humor, and one of the, I think the, one of the funniest parts of the movie is when Andre the Giant is fighting the protagonist, and he throw, he's throwing rocks at him, and the protagonist is saying, wow, you're very strong. He's like, I know. I don't even work out. <laughs> <laughs> so to ends to conclude, in response to your question, Rick, The Princess Bride would be the, one of my favorite movies that I would pick. And to change it, I would just make it longer because I enjoy it so much. Thank you. Who's next? Come on, there's movie fans out there, I know it. <laughs> Yo! Slow it on, pick a number from one to four. Five? Hmm. No, two. <laughs> two, okay. Pick one of your favorite movies. If you were a character in that movie, what character would you be? Thank you, Mr. Table Topics Master, uh, fellow members, viewers at home, and guests. I have a really favorite movie, and everybody, every time I talk to people, they like the movie as much as I did. It's called The Groundhog Day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you like the movie, but I know why I like the movie. <laughs> the guy gets the girl at the end, right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, I don't know the names of the people, but I'll probably like to be the main character. Actually, I'm already the main character. That's why I like the movie. Because that movie talks about everybody. You know, somebody is waking up in the morning and he's at the same place over and over and over. Guess what? I'm in the same place over and over and over <laughs> myself, right? He didn't like the place he was in. Well, sometimes I don't like the place I'm in, right? So, in essence, that's my favorite movie and that's my favorite character and I'm actually playing the favorite character. But I have a surprise. You're playing the, the, you know, the main character too, as everybody else. So enjoy the movie and have a happy ending. Thank you. I think we have time for one more. Volunteers, come on up. <laughs> Give me a number. Number one. 
Number one. Tell us about a movie that's had a profound influence on your life and why you'd like other people to see that movie. <laughs> Fellow Toastmasters, movie fans at home, guests, when I was 11 years old, there was a movie that came out, and all my friends had to go see it. We had to. Many of us watched it four, five, six times. I, on the other hand, watched it a grand total of 25 times, <laughs> at least. Any guesses on what the movie was? Probably have no idea. <laughs> The movie was Terminator, part two. And the reason why that I ended up watching that movie so much is because they showed it on TV. And it just so happened that I had learned how to use the VCR. And specifically, I learned how to use the record function, where you could record programs off of the TV, and then I would have that was the very first movie I was able to record in its entirety, with commercials and everything. Now the funny thing is, is that this is in Venezuela. So I have the entire Terminator 2 movie pretty much memorized from beginning to end in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be happy to know that Hasta la Vista Baby stays Hasta la Vista Baby. <laughs> they didn't change that to English. <laughs> I still found it funny. <laughs> So the movie had a profound impact in my life, mainly because I was able to, to use a skill that I had just acquired, and also because it taught me the importance uh, to be careful about Skynet. Madam Timer, did all the table topic speakers qualify? Yes, they did. Thank you. Read their names. Mm -hmm. No, their names were. Names. Seth, Slobodan, and Alex. Thank you. Now let's take a moment or two. Thank you. Now I'd like to turn the uh, meeting back over to our Toastmaster Art. Stephanie Chambers to offer her evaluation. Yo! Hello, Toastmasters and all the guests and viewers at home. I really enjoyed tonight's Table Topics theme of movies. I thought that was a really fun idea of Rex to get everyone in the summer spirit of watching movies and commenting on them. First off, we had Seth, who's magically disappeared, uh, and he he did a good job of talking about what he would change in a movie. He kept it simple. And he started off with saying there are three parts to the question. You know, what, which movie, I'm oh, sorry, which movie, uh, what would I change? And then the third was what effect would that have on the audience? Then he went through it. The only problem is he forgot the third one. <laughs> and then he did the two, and I kept waiting for number three, and he left the stage. So that's one thing to keep in mind, is if you're doing table topics, if you promise three, it's, it's good to try and to remember the third one if you can. But other than that, Seth's always entertaining, and I think we all enjoyed his table topic. The second person we had was Slobodan, and Slobodan did a a great job as well of using Uber. He talked about Groundhog Day and he made us all remember that we're all in that position of being the same person every day, which I thought was fun. I felt though the thing that I would suggest to you slow down in terms of improvement is if you can try and think of some structure uh, before you start so that it doesn't feel like you've just run out of steam. I mean it's it's hard to do, but if you can take the time and think of some structure or some ending that that helps. So, but otherwise it was a fun approach and I really enjoyed it. 
And the third person we had was Alex, and Alex did a great job about talking about Terminator 2. <laughs> I liked the way you used the audience, you got everyone trying to guess which movie you'd watched 25 times, which is always good to get the audience involved. I, I also liked your use of humour and the fact that Hustle La Vista was the same in Spanish. My only suggestion for you is a bit like Slobodan is maybe to think a bit more about the structure because I thought the ending could have been a little bit stronger. That was probably my only suggestion. But overall it was a great, great night for table topics. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Now we move on to the prepared speeches portion of our meeting. Our first speaker tonight is Scott Terry, and here to present his objectives and later to evaluate him is his evaluator, Jody Roth. Yo! Fellow Joe Spencer's guests and viewers at home, Scott Terry is speaking from our Advanced Communication Series 2 uh, series. Uh, speaking to inform uh, is after he finished his first communication manual series. He's at his second speech and his title is Depression. Objective of his speech tonight is analyze the audience regarding his chosen subject, focus his presentation at the audience level of knowledge, build a supporting case for each major point using information gathering through research, effectively use at least one visual aid to enhance the audience understanding. He'll speak for five to seven minutes. Welcome, Scott Terry. What is depression for you? What does depression mean for you? Think about the experiences you've had in your life and what you've created. Welcome, Toastmasters. I'm your guest and viewers at home. Depression, for some people, is that moment after a bullet whizzes by their head and they can breathe again, and then they start to wonder who they are, what just happened to them, and how it impacts them. For some people, that moment, right there, is the moment when they shine, when they excel, when they become who they need to be, to save another, to do what they need to do. For some people, when their partner leaves them, it's the worst thing in the world and they think this is the time they should leave this life. And for others, it's a moment of freedom. Oh, I can breathe again. Ah! This is who I am. This is great. Depression is the misaligned vision, the vision, who we see ourselves are, who we see ourselves are as, that we've gotten trapped in like a bad habit that we won't let go of, no matter how much it hurts the next day. I'd like everyone to work with me for a second, and we're going to do a very quick exercise. So I'd like you to take your arms, put one forearm in the other forearm, right in front of you, and you're going to squeeze your fingers into your arms. And before you do, I want you to just think for a moment of a terrible event in your life. Start squeezing. Five. Squeeze harder. Four. Think of how, how it impact you. How it made you feel. How you thought. What you heard. What you smelt. What you taste. Four. Three. Two. Squeeze harder. And one. And let it go. Feel the blood rushing back into your fingers, into your hands, and feel how you've been holding on to it and now it's time to let go. Once again, squeeze your arms together, and now take a moment and do exactly the opposite. Take one moment and think of an incredibly beauteous event in your life. A light, a moment when you shined, a moment when there was light and peace, a moment where you were free. Five, four, squeeze harder. Three, two, is that as hard as you can squeeze? A little bit more. Breathe deeply in. And one, and shake it out. And feel that blood rush in. 
and get how you create that moment of freedom. And that moment of freedom might mean for somebody like Tom being on the boat and being rocked to sleep and knowing he's at peace. For someone like Vera, it might be in the garden. For Cindy, it might be a moment where she excelled in her life, in her school, or where, in her job, in her life as it is. Depression is a combination of two things, of biology and circumstances, that we choose to create, to choose to identify with, that we choose to attach to, like a rapid dog drooling as it's taken a bone in the side of its mouth and is running down the street, and it gets trapped right there. That's depression. It's not what happened. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Trauma, like depression, isn't what happened to you or to me or to any of us. Trauma is that moment when we got lost in what happened. It's what we did and what we're doing with what happened. So there's this moment, and I'm 17 years old. And I just come back from the worst day in my life to this point. And I walk up the three flights of stairs with my winter coat on, and <coughs> my first girlfriend just left me. My books were stolen right before finals. And I'm failing out of school. And I can't think. And I can't think because I have the spelling of a third grader. And I'm in college. My grammar isn't much better because of my learning disability. And I can barely read. And I have an IQ that's 99 percentile. I'm smarter than 99 percent of the people who have ever taken the test. And it's only used as a weapon to beat myself up with. It's not a gift. Nothing's a gift. And so I take this moment, and I'm standing there, and I walk into the room, and I freeze. You know that game. And I look out the window, which is five feet in front of me, and I stop. Because I know I can't take a step further. And to the left, there's a wall socket, and I don't even want to think. And to the right, there's something way too sharp. And so I freeze. And the fear grips me for five hours straight. Trauma isn't what happened. And now, I got lots of degrees. They don't mean anything. What means something is what I do with them. Like any of it. Here's my new little Bible, by the way. It's called the DSM-5. Ha! Ah! Here's a check from a client. <laughs> I'm going to describe really quickly and simply what dystymia, low-grade depression is, for the last, having it for on and off for the last two years. It's having one, having two or more of the following items. Either poor appetite or overeating. Having insomnia or hypersomnia, meaning I can't go to sleep or I can't wake up again. Low energy or fatigue. Low self-esteem or poor self-concept. Poor concentration, difficulty making decisions, and feelings of hopelessness. And dread and terror and pain that we won't let go of. It's biology and circumstances that we get trapped in. But there's a simple solution, and it's a really easy way out. Two things, biology and circumstances. That's it. Circumstances, we attack, and then we could address the biology. Sometimes the magic pill helps, sometimes seeing a therapist, somebody to give us a new perspective. Biology is incredibly easy. We address the biology and then we could hit to the consequences, circumstances. Biology is things like exercise, meditation, diet, and sleep. But it's not just exercise. 
for the 30 minutes of intensity to get the brain chemistry going. It's also the moment of choice. That moment, this moment of choice, where you take control of you. So as we conclude, and you clap and say goodbye to me, just take a moment afterwards to think your moment of choice now and the happiness that you wish to create in your lives. Thank you. Back Toastmasters. Now I would like to invite Alex Sakea, who's evaluator and will read the objectives for our next speaker, Satish Sabavati. Alex. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, Satish Sabapati is going to give speech number 10. Speech number 10 in the Competent Communicator Manual is the last speech. It's on to advanced manuals after this. And as speech number 10 or project number 10, the goal is to inspire your audience. The objectives for the project are to inspire the audience by appealing to noble motives and challenging the audience to achieve a higher level of beliefs or achievement. Some of the other objectives are to appeal to the audience's needs and emotions using stories, anecdotes, quotes to add drama. Satish Savapati has been a member of Golden Speakers for the past two and a half years. He works at Genetic ID and he lives with his wife and two children. His talk is entitled, Someday Everything Will All Make Perfect Sense. Mm -hmm. and the talk is between eight and 10 minutes. Please welcome Satish Sabapati. Has anyone in the audience ever wondered, did I do that? Ah! I'm glad I'm not alone. Ah! In the next eight to ten minutes, you'll be listening to a story in which, my own story, in which I talk about a time point when I stood, did I do that? And then moved on and in a later stage, was thankful and I said, well, it all makes perfect sense now. Good evening, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow members, guests, and viewers at home, and uh, my evaluator, Alexa Kaya. After listening to my story, you'll be walking away tonight inspired, one, not to be dejected when things don't happen the way you want it. And two, you'll also be greater inspired to do what you want to do next. In my mid-twenties, I was in India <coughs> happily doing my PhD and all my sole career goal was to be in America. I kept applying emails. I did all kind of prayers, heliolatry included. <laughs> <laughs> and it was around August 1999, I was ready to leave. But only in October 99 did I hear that I have an offer to be in New York, Buffalo. Yay! <laughs> I was excited. And I landed in Buffalo, New York. I looked through the window as my friend drove me through the city to his house. It was in November 1999. Snow piled on both sides. It was nice. I was thrilled to see snow. From India, I've never seen snow. I was thrilled. And I was amazed to see those big shopping malls. Huge onions, big tomatoes and bananas. Wow, America gave me the impression, big. 
<laughs> and right then, the honeymoon stopped. <laughs> it was over. Reality is certain. The beautiful white snow turned to haunt me and my skin started peeling, cracking, bleeding. Ooh, I didn't want that. And then as this happened, I had my friend who was talking about stories. How good food, culture, and even the lifestyle in India was far better. Again, that didn't help me too. <laughs> I knew something was going on in my head. I have what I wanted working for therapeutic immunotherapy to work on melanoma. Wow, that's a great thing I had to do in life, eh? my career. But in my head, I was not happy. I was sad, in fact. And I wanted to return to India. You were depressed. <laughs> yes. But I acted right now, right then, moved back to India. <laughs> I felt good. I was back in India just in three months. Right the next day after I landed in India, I got a job in a hospital to work in a research lab there. And I started working. Of course, you had the curious family members, friends, walking out to you. What made you come back? And my mother had a very curious question. Even your suit looks all new. Why did you come back? Of course, I wanted to come back. That is when I started feeling fish out of water when I was back in India. Did I do that? <laughs> it really bothered me. I'm here back in India. What? Because my skin skin green? I shouldn't have done that. I was feeling miserable. There was nothing that I could do but questioning myself. Why did I return? But I'm glad I didn't stop there. I started applying again. Started applying. And within nine months, I got another position. But my mother said, you were homesick. That's why you returned. I'm going to find a wife for you. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Arrange marriage. And my friend in the hospital started arranging. She suggested of her friend, and that friend of hers happened to be my wife now. Oh. So a funny thing happened at work. I have my wife. I come back to U.S. after three months, get engaged, come back to India, come back to U.S., Kentucky, going up my career ladder, ending up in a job to do research in radiation medicine. Now, I felt good. So that moment, I thought, everything is making sense now. And now I feel my life is full and complete. I have my two children. I have a fulfilling job. Everything makes perfect sense. So at this moment, I would like to quote Mother Sri Aurobindo Ashram, Mother's words. Keep intact your <coughs> aspiration and carry it high. Whatever may be the past, Whatever may be the faults committed, co concentrate exclusively on what you want to be. Someday, everything will make perfect sense. <laughs> Thank you, Shatish.
Now, Rhea, if the timer would please give us two minutes while people evaluate the patients. Thank you. Now I would like to invite everyone to come and sit close and pull chairs up into a semicircle. And I'd like to invite Gene Simons and Craig's evaluator Bob Burns to introduce her project. Please come from the back ones up close. She ain't gonna start unless you move. This is a story. <laughs> Take it away, Bob. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Good evening, fellow Toastmaster guests, those of you at home. And we're ready for our third excellent speech tonight by Jean Simonton Craig. She's working her first speech from the Advanced Communication Series on Storytelling. And this is a folk tale. And the objectives of this speech is to tell a folk tale that is entertaining and enjoyable for a specific age group. That's this age group. <laughs> <laughs> and to use vivid imagery and voice to enhance the tale. And keep in mind that is, she is storytelling and she is not acting. There's a big difference. Well, Jean Simonton Craig has lived in Fairfield since 1988, about five years after I was born. She's <laughs> <laughs> been a for about seven years. And she was a, a past president of Golden Speakers in 2007 to 2008, and was the area 92 governor in 2011 and 2012. So she's quite an accomplished lady. And, and she belongs to three Toastmaster clubs and finds the diversity among the members a refreshing and broadening experience. And I'm sure she would recommend that to you, to be a member of different clubs, including this one. Her speech tonight, again, is number one of Folk Tale and it's in the storytelling manual. The title of the speech says, Briar Rabbit Earns a Dollar a Minute, and it's a seven to nine minute speech. So please help me welcome Jean Simon from Craig. Fellow Toastmasters, guests, and viewers at home, one fine morning, Brer Fox decided he was going to plant him a patch of goober peas. As a heliolatrist, he loved being out in the sun anyway. <laughs> so he set to with a will, and before you know it, he had raked and hoed a beautiful patch, had a great patch of goober peas. Those goober peas, vines got long, full, and there was his goobers all over this patch. Well, Br'er Rabbit saw this goober patch going in. And he went home and he told all the little rabbits and Ms. Rabbit about this goober patch and where it was. And goober peas, by the way, for those of you that don't know, are peanuts. <laughs> as soon as those goober peas were ripe, all the little rabbits and Ms. Rabbit and Mr. Rabbit were over there in that patch, and they were just taking up handfuls of goober peas as fast as they were coming in. Why, Br'er Fox came in, and he could barely find goober peas for himself. Br'er Fox was not happy about this. He was very mad that he had gone to all this trouble to plant a goober patch, and there were no goober peas. Now, he suspected Br'er Rabbit. But that rascally rabbit he couldn't catch because rascally rabbit was hiding his tracks. So Br'er Fox came up with a plan. Walked along the edge of the goober, goober patch and he found a little smooth spot where a cunning rabbit could get in. And he took a hickory sapling and he bent it down almost to the ground and he tied a rope around it. And then he put the other end of the rope right next to that opening with a slip knot and a trigger. Whoever was coming into that patch was going to get caught, that slip knot was going to go around their body, and they were going to go flying. <laughs> well, next morning, Br'er Rabbit comes a-slipping into the patch. As soon as he goes through that little opening, that crack, slip knot 
landed on his hind legs, trigger was pulled, and he goes sailing betwixt earth and heaven, just bouncing up and down. Couldn't go get left, couldn't go right, just up and down, flailing around in the air. Well, Br'er Rabbit knew he was going to have to come up with something pretty clever to explain to Br'er Fox why he was dangling from the tree. When? He heard a rumbling and a grumbling coming down the road. <laughs> and he looked, and there was Br'er Bear coming down the road. Now, Br'er Bear was looking for a honey pot, bee tree, so he could get some honey. All of a sudden, Br'er Rabbit said, I got a plan. He's thinking he's got a plan. So, hey, howdy, Br'er Bear. Br'er Bear looked around, says, finally looked up and said, oh. Howdy, Br'er Rabbit, in a grumbly, growly voice like bears have. How you doing? Br'er Rabbit said, oh, just middling, Br'er Bear, just middling. Br'er Bear said, what are you doing up there? And Br'er Rabbit said, I'm being paid a dollar a minute to scare away the crows from this goober patch. <laughs> <laughs> well, Br'er Bear thought that was a pretty good idea. I mean, he had a large family and the money could come in handy. Br'er Rabbit said, well, in that case, I'll let you take over this job. Br'er Fox is offering to pay a dollar a minute for anyone who will scare off the crows from his goober patch. Deal with me. Do you want that job? <laughs> Br'er Rabbit showed him how to bend the tree down, get the knot off of Br'er Rabbit. Once Br'er Rabbit was free, let's get the knot on the Br'er Bear. Br'er Bear, and the next thing we knew, Br'er Bear was flying high, that bouncing up and down from the tree, growling at all the crows. Br'er Rabbit is just laughing. That's how it's done this. Br'er Rabbit scampers down the road to Br'er Fox's house and said, Hey, your trap is sprung and the goober thief is hanging from the tree. Br'er Fox grabs up his cane, goes walking down that road, huffing and puffing, and gets there, and he gets to Br'er Bear and he says, You are a goober thief. And he is ranting and raving so loud, Br'er Bear can't get a word in edgewise. <laughs> Br'er Rabbit's just thinking this is the funniest thing. He heads off down the road, but he knows Br'er Bear is going to be pretty upset that he got tricked. So Br'er Rabbit heads on down the road, gets to the mud next to the pond, and slinks into the mud so that all that's showing above the mud is his eyeballs. Looks just like a big old bullfrog. Even his ears are down, just like this. Pretty soon, he hears this rumbling coming down the road, and it's Br'er Bear. And Br'er Bear comes along and says, Howdy, Br'er Bullfrog. Have you seen Br'er Rabbit? And then in a voice just like a croaky old frog, Br'er Rabbit says, She just went down the road. Br'er Bear thanked him very much, and grumbled on down the road after Br'er Rabbit. Br'er Rabbit's <laughs> laughing. He's just thinking this is so cool. He jumps out of the mud, jumps in the pond, washes off, heads on for home already thinking about the next visit to Br'er Fox's goober pea patch. <laughs>
So we voted. So we voted. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, take it away. <laughs> Thank you. No. This is the evaluation portion of the meeting and for our uh, prepared speeches. So I'd like to introduce um, Jyoti Raj Adhikari to evaluate Scott Terry's speech. Welcome to Osmas, yes, the viewers and home again. Here I am to evaluate Scott Terry for his second speech from computer, sorry, advanced communication series. I'll take the aid of uh, this uh, guidelines provided by Toastmaster itself. So first is how well was the speech direct how well was the speech directed to the interest and background of the audience? Yes it was. We are the age group would like to hear about the depression and all this stuff. So it was very directed well, I can say. What method did the speaker use to support his or major points? How effective were those methods? Yes, he used a lot of examples. He saw the Bibles, he read the Bible. <coughs> he used a visual aid, the whiteboard, that was really impressive. How did the visual aid enhance audience understanding? Yes. It enhanced our <coughs> understanding and the, the conclusion was really that visual aid <coughs> supported your conclusion because you were lacking of time and when you picked up that, put it here, it gave a big picture of what you actually wanted to say. How knowledgeable did the speaker appear to be about the subject? Yes, it looks you are very knowledgeable about the matter. You have ample, ample knowledge about the subject matter. Did the speaker appear to be well researched? Sorry, did the speech appear to be well researched? Yes, the speech was really well researched. And it was well rehearsed as well. So speech was very, really very nice. We'd like to hear more from you. Uh, here I will highlight some points, which I think that will be good for your coming speeches. We had a very good introduction, very nice introduction about depression. But here I would like to suggest the introduction was very long. And you have this introduction about three, four minutes in five minutes speech. So most of the time was taken by your introduction. So there was a lack in the body. The conclusion was there, introduction was there, but I was not able to get into the subject matter what actually you're gonna speak now. So that that I suggest to make it like a short introduction and a body and a conclusion in three parts. You have good gestures, I appreciate that. And one thing I want to say, in the first introduction, if you would have said, why we want to listen to that? So I was thinking that one point of time, you would say, why, why this audience would love to listen about the depression? Why should we listen, actually? So that, that I would like to put you on your agenda next time, that why would we like to listen to it and how it's going to benefit us. And the, the third and foremost point was about the conclusion. The conclusion was very short, maybe because of the lack of time. And I, I saw there was two points. One was biology, and the next was uh, the next was circumstances. circumstances. So I I didn't hear about the circumstances thing. So I'd like to report the thing in the next. Next piece. Thank you very much. Next, I'm going to introduce Alex Kea to evaluate Satish Sabathi. All right, thank you, Bert. Toastmasters, viewers at home, guests, and most of all, Satish. Someday, everything will all make perfect sense. Title of your talk. The goal was to inspire your audience. Um, I'll start by telling you a few things that I really appreciate about your talk. Um, really appreciated 
the way that you made points. You, you had very good staging in your presentation. You made a point here, you make another point here, you make another point here. It makes it very easy and clear to follow a presentation when it's well staged. Uh, you had several points where you use great vocal variety, tomatoes and bananas, ah. and arranging. I appreciate the air quotes. You also included heliolatry into your presentation. And I think I always appreciate it when someone introduces the word of the day into a prepared speech, because you know you didn't plan for that. Uh, a couple of things that I, that I thought you could have done better. Well, I'll, I'll finish with a couple of things that I like. Uh, your stories were very vivid. You told them very confidently and with charisma. Um, and what I think you could have done better is that I would have liked to see a little bit more relating to the audience. You did, you did it well at the beginning when you said, um, when you walk away from this talk, you're going to get one, you're going <coughs> to get two. I would have liked to see that at the end as well. Um, a little bit more of when you are feeling like things are not really working out, know that someday everything will all work out. Something that brings it back to, to the audience. Um, you also had a couple of wording things. These are minor little things. I, I struggle with these a lot, actually. When I get nervous, I start just chopping off words. And there were a couple uh, of things you said, like you said, uh, New York, Buffalo, Buffalo, New York. Uh, you said it didn't help too, didn't help either. Um, you said feeling fish out of water, feeling like a fish out of water. Uh, just a couple of little things, but those just come from talking more and more. And I have the red light. Thank you very much. Thank you. No! Thank you. And finally, I'll introduce Bob Burns, who will evaluate Gene Simon King Craig. Go! Good evening, fellow Toastmasters, those at home, guests. I definitely would rather listen to Jean's speech and experience idolatry. Because she's much more bright than the sun. So anyway, now, don't you feel that Jean just gave a great folk tale? Yes! I mean, I mean, you could just be sitting around the campfire, and she mentioned that earlier tonight, about sitting around the campfire and talking and just giving a folk tale so people listen, they're inspired, and they feel good. And it's just a fun time to just sit back. And that's why we were all gathered around Jean, because we listened to her give a great folk tale. And just to go through some of the evaluation, um, according to the folktale, and this is the first speech, so we look forward to nine other storytelling, or four other storytelling, because uh, she has five more, four more to give out of the five speeches. Did it attract your interest? Absolutely attracted our interest, no doubt about it. Were we entertained? Absolutely we were entertained. What's really good about this speech, in my opinion, is that the techniques were all there. The tempo, she had a great tempo. I mean, she was moving along, she didn't really pause too long. She just paused long enough to get it to sink in. Um, her rhythm was great. Her inflection was superior. I mean, she gave great inflection on things that needed to be, and then she lowered her voice and, and put her head down and had kind of a somber type of mood whenever she went through that. Her pauses, her volume was perfect. She had vocal variety, which is what I suffer from because I'm usually out there, but Jean, I think is out there and she has what I think every speaker needs and that's confidence. She is confident about how she does a speech and how she gives that speech. Now what parts of the story are most exciting? Well you could pick what was most exciting about the story for you but I think it, for me it was when it was the scare of the of the crows from the goober patch and the and the rabbit swinging around. I think it was swinging around on the vine, and it was just uh, kind of inspiring me in that way, but I think that was kind of exciting. But I think each part of the story was exciting if you really pay attention to the story. So, but 
what mood were we trying to get conveyed in this speech or in this story? Well, there was a lot of moods. I found a bunch. Anxiety, worry, excitement, fun, sincerity. It was all there. There was such a variety of moods in the story. You just couldn't say, oh, wow, it was just like solemn. No, it wasn't solemn, but it was about everything else. So, can you visualize this story? Can you? Yeah. Absolutely you can visualize this story, and that's the purpose of storytelling is to visualize it. And so the only recommendation I have for Gene, because I think this is a really difficult speech to evaluate in a negative way, is that I think the ending could have been a little bit more exciting. I think she just kind of trapped us there, and it was like the end, and then we clapped, and that was it. But I think she could have made it a little bit more dramatic. But other than that, Gene, it was a great speech. Thank you very much. Next, we will vote for the best evaluator. Um, timekeeper, did everybody qualify? Well, yes, except I want to apologize to Alex. There was a misprint uh, on this sheet, I believe, in the timing. Um, and I was looking at one to um, weighing the lights at one minute, two minute, and three minutes. And, and so I believe he. he was falsely rushed. <laughs> so um, I, I. So did everybody feel, qualify? I feel yes. That including tabletop. Yes. Okay. So tabletop. For the evaluators. Yeah. So you like, get a chance to vote for your favorite evaluator. It was Stephanie Chambers. It was Jyoti Raj, Alex, or Bob. All right, so we're going to get to reports from uh, some of our role players. Our first report will be from our timer. Rhea, would you uh, give us your uh, timer's report? <coughs> So, Rick won so, Seth had two ahs and one so, and two Xeroxes, Slobodan had one ah, one um, one you know, three so's, and one Xerox, or repeat. Alex had nine ahs and ahs, six ums. One so, six ands, and one Xerox. Stephanie had two ahs, two so's, two ands, one pause, and one Xerox. Jyoti had five ahs and ahs, five so's, two buts, five ands, and one Xerox. Scott had one like, three so's, 24 ands, Whoa. one tongue click, 
and one false start. Satish didn't want Scott to feel so bad, so he racked up 16 ands, two butts, one so, and one Xerox. Bob had two us, two ums, two likes, two so's, two butts, and nine ands. Gene only had one so, four ands, and here's where I added an, another category of well. She had three wells. Dialect by design. <laughs> <laughs> one suggestion in that category is perhaps replacing some of the wells with what do you think Br'er Rabbit was up to with this? Maybe engage the audience. And that's Thank my report you. for today. Thank you, Mr. Grammarian Wannabe. <laughs> Let's hear from our grammarian, Rhonda Whitker. Yo! Thank you. We have five people used the word heliotry, heliotry. Uh, four used that word specifically, and Jean got creative and used heliolatrist, which I thought was excellent. And when Satish used it, he used it in a cultural sense. I think he really did some sun worship. So it added a, a richness and a depth to it. Rick used it, Alex used it, and Bob used it. I like the fact that when Alex came up, he said, hey, what's up, conversationally, and offered movies at movie fans at home. So that he, he gave the, off, the appearance of more depth to what he was saying. Stephanie said, overall, it was a great night for table topics. Scott said very emotionally, in a tone I could hardly hear, I was on the edge of my seat, ah, I can breathe again. Such great tonal variety. Bob, I think you must be from the deep south, is that correct? Only part of the time. Because the way you pronounce Briar Rabbit was Briar Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciated that Jean told me what a goober pea was. And Jyoti used the word, Jyoti's gone, but Jyoti used the word ample knowledge. It's a nice word to throw in there. Alex used the word charisma. That's a word we don't hear here much. Some of us have it, though. The ones with the deep voice. Ha! And we have Bob, who used the word tempo and moods. That is my report. Thank you. Thank you, Rhonda. Next, I will give my report. As a general evaluator, I, my role is to evaluate the evaluators, but tonight I'm also going to evaluate the grammarian. Grammarian, <laughs> heliotry should not be capitalized. No. Italics would be okay, but what I would suggest if you're a grammarian, pick a word that you can pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> That's the suggestion. <laughs> As regards to our evaluators, I'm going to make a general comment and then give specific to all of them. It's okay to use notes. And if you're going to use notes, have them where you can see them. Don't have them over there someplace. And that, um, and that was true in, a, in some of the prepared speeches as well as some of the evaluations where people kind of got lost in their notes. So you should know this stuff if you forget something or whatever. If you can find it quickly, but don't spend a lot of time digging for stuff. So that's a general criticism that applies to a number of people, and I'll get into that specifically here. Stephanie had really great constructive criticism. She was spot on in terms of her insight, in terms of every speaker, I thought, in terms of really great ideas, and really succinct in terms of, of uh, hitting the nail on the head. And one of the great examples was, and Seth wasn't here, here to hear it, was she said, Seth, 
you would have been sitting there, she said, you left this hanging. You had three, ah. three points. You made the three points. And then when you finished up, you ended up on point number two. You never quite got to point number three. And I thought that was like, bam, great suggestion. But at the same time, my suggestion for Stephanie was four or five times you were looking over here someplace. Now you don't ha know how you could read stuff upside down at an angle. <laughs> but it was, I think it was kind of a ner nervous thing more than anything else. But if you need something, grab it and say, oh yeah, here's the, here's the other point I wanted to make. So that was, the, that was the thing, but otherwise, great job. Jyoti Raj really had great praise. Um, he had really insights into the structure of the speech, which I thought was really refreshing in terms of uh, how it was constructed, talking about the introduction was too long, there wasn't enough time for the body, and certainly not enough time for conclusion, and that's, that's fairly common, but I thought that was provided a lot of insight. But he also was in the case where he had a speaker who was relying upon notes a lot, looking over his shoulder, didn't really mention that. And then when he was doing the evaluation, he was also fumbling for a point in his, his notes for, to make that final point. And that was a little bit distracting. So that's my suggestion for him. Alex, very enthusiastic about uh, uh, his uh, speech the speech that he was evaluating, but there was one point during the evaluation where you jumped, and that was, oh, I'm going to suggest some things for criticisms, but before I do that, I need to say a couple more things. And it would have been better, smoother to say, oh, and I have some suggestions for improvement. And you can come back and praise something else. It doesn't have to be at the end of your thing. So it was a little bit jumpy. But otherwise, <laughs> fabulous job because it's real clear in terms of your, your insights. And then finally, Bob Burns. Boy, great body language. Really enthusiastic. I think you really sort of captured the storytelling mood in terms of your evaluation and that was really really great um, you had really great body language and for you I really have not not much to uh, suggest in terms of improvement I thought it was really a great evaluation per a storytelling which is kind of new to a lot of the members of the club and that concludes my evaluation <laughs> Moving right along, oh, I want to invite our joke master up to give us the one-liners. I read a lot of them over the internet and I was laughing for about a day. <laughs> <laughs> Marriage. It's nature's way of keeping us a fighting with strangers. Ah, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Three of my stocks fell off the financial page today. They're now in the help wanted section. <laughs> <laughs> and my psychiatrist told me I was crazy after all this. So I told him I wanted the second opinion. He said, okay, you're nuts. <laughs> we need a recruiter to be joke master frequently. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it is now time to oh, give the awards out for the meeting. So we will hear about the best table topic speaker, best speaker, best evaluator. I have all sorts of little bits of paper here. Okay, let's hear a drum roll for the best table topic speaker. Mr. Alex Takea.
have prior announcements. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had something unusual. We had a tie in the voting for best evaluator. We had Bob and Alex both receiving the same number of votes. So Alex, they did well. Get out. Okay. Evaluator off. <laughs> he wants to arm wrestle. I think I should just give him the speech. Or I should just give him the I would like now to invite our president to retire the <laughs> Fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, at the end of the program, we usually ask our guests if they would like to comment on something they appreciated about the meeting. Is there anyone that would like to comment? Um, I appreciated the lightheartedness, the talent, and the organization of the meeting. Thank you, Zach. Great. Um, we have Jeanette that came in late. Jeanette, would you like to comment on something you appreciated about the meeting? The international, the final world champion Toastmasters International Conference. That conference was held last weekend, and the video I believe cost thirty dollars. So if we had ten people that wanted to watch the video of all the best speakers at the conference, which is educational and highly valuable for getting us to improve our style, I suggest that. We all get involved. Is there anything else before we close the meeting tonight? Tom? I'd like to encourage people to take the trophies home. They are our marketing campaign. We want you to take them home, put them on your desk, take them to where you work. Put it on your middle, dashboard. And then, whatever. <laughs> and you would be surprised. People will ask you, what's that? And it's an opportunity to sell to your, your hat? Yes. Thank you, Tom. I'm glad you brought that up. And when you, you receive it, walk away with it. Yes. Like, yes, I've got this. I'm really happy to have it. Take it to lunch. And Don't put it back before you leave, I want the winners that. to come up so I can take your photo. Oh. Yes. All right. It's already being taken. Right. Oh, it's already up. All right. I just wanted to ask, too, maybe when we talk to our the guests, battle. if we could ask them just how they heard about Toastmasters and what brought them here tonight. So we could, if someone in, invited them to come, I think that's a cool thing to acknowledge. Yeah. Yeah? I don't know how... Would that one of our guests to like to answer that? Well, how about how we adjourn the here? meeting? I motion that we adjourn the meeting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm just saying in general, I'd like to... How about we adjourn? Here, here. here. Sure. Is that a second, Great. Bert? That's fine. I'll second That's it. Fine. Yeah. Great suggestion, Jean. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Yeah, Great. thank you.